Got student athletes, Cam Jones, Issa Ogadaro, and Tyler Kolek. And if you will uh, please raise your hand, state your affiliation, and we'll get a microphone to you. So right here in front. Tyler, oh, Ben Steele, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Tyler, we haven't talked to you in a couple weeks. Just how close do you feel to 100%? And do you feel like you can aggravate the injury when, when you play? Question for Tyler. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been practicing this whole week. Uh, I feel good. I feel confident. Um, at this point in the season, nobody's 100%. Everybody's battling through something. So just got to you know, put the straps on and battle up again. Questions, please? Right here. Jack Albert, Marquette Wire. Um, just a question for you, Cam. Um, uh, I know, know all Big East honorees for you. I, I heard the, the quote you gave Fana on the, on the shoot around. Um, just how much motivation did, did not getting that respect from the conference give you? And, and how's that chip on the shoulder help you play better? Cam? Um, you know, just being with Coach. Well, first of all, what up, Jack? How you doing? Uh, but then I, uh, you know, Coach. Coach Smart does a pretty good job of, you know, keeping my edge there and making sure that edge is sharp. And um, although I didn't really, like, it didn't hurt my feelings that I wasn't on the Big East team, but that was something to use and add to my edge. So, um, you know, that's I didn't, I didn't work hard all season and I mean all off season, do all that to make a Big East team. Um, I did all that for where we are now in March Madness to make a deep run, and you know that's all I'm focused on at the moment. Questions, please. Right here. Also, you talked before the season about having unfinished business this year. Now that the NCAA tournament is around, how have you like found that that mental edge? Question for Osa. I think we've found the edge all season. Um, when we're playing at our best, we have it, and that's something that we've been really focusing on during this this two-game tournament first, um, just having that edge going at everyone who are matched up against. Right. Right here, yeah. Uh, Kaylin Wright, Marquette Wire. Uh, oh, so last go around for you, just what are the emotions and feelings going into this first game? Oh, so. Uh, I'm just really trying to stay in the present. Uh, this opportunity with my, my best friends in the world, I'm um, just going out here competing. I'm not really focused on the future or thinking about how this could be my last, whatever. Um, just really trying to stay in the present and make the most of it. Right here. Uh, Gary Graves, Associated Press. Tyler, how how does this team really kind of put last year you know, behind and say, you know, th we're, we're number two seed again, but we're a much different team where you feel like the, the team kind of got over it and really transformed itself for this year? Question for Tyler. Yeah, uh, you know, we watched a clip from, from Cam the other day talking to the media, talking about how, you know, if last year wasn't enough motivation, you know, that sour taste in our mouth going into this year, then, you know, you, you aren't meant for this team, you aren't meant to be on this team. So, you know, just the trust and the care that we have for each other to, to go out there and, and compete for one another is, is something that we've talked about all year, and, you know, this is the most important time to do it. So. I feel like this group of guys has, has a certain connection and bond. Um, so we're going to go out there and show people that. Right here in front. Tyler, can you take us through the just the injury? Just I know you had your appendix out the other night. Was it similar in that kind of pain? And then just take us through the process of getting, being able to come back and, and play in this game. Tyler. Yeah, so uh, they said grade two oblique strain. Um, you know, it was, it was a three to four week injury, so we're still kind of on, on the front end of it a little bit. Um, but but I made great progress. Um, you know, the d doctors really took care of me, uh, did everything that I could to get back. Uh, that, that first night and first day, um, so it's, it's basically a core muscle injury. And you don't realize how everything you do is your core. You know, me and Cam, were, we were in class the next day on Thursday, and he had to grab my arm and help me out of the chair. I couldn't even really stand up. Um, that, that morning I got in the car, I couldn't even reach out to really shut the door of the car. So, you know, it was definitely a struggle those, the, the first week, just trying to, you know, even get up out of bed, sit up, um, just little things like that. 
kind of throws you all out of whack. You know, your back, you're using more of your back, and then that, that gets out of whack. Um, but you know, I'm, just, I'm just thankful for the trainers and, and uh, coaching staff, and I'm ready to go. Questions, please? Right here. Cam, just for you again, um, I was watching some of your old high school clips, and you got like the spin on the ball that's been so deadly this past month. Just when did you add that to your game, and, and how long have you been working on it, tweaking on it to, to get those tough layup finishes? Question for Cam. Um, I actually worked on it a lot as a kid. Um, very uniquely, my granddad had a basketball goal at his house with no rim, so it's just a backboard. And I remember just throwing a ball at the backboard a bunch of different ways. and seeing how the ball did different things when I did different things with the ball on the backboard. And growing up, um, you know where the ball should be placed on the layup. Um, so you can kind of manipulate it a little bit with certain spins. Questions, please? Right here. Uh, for also, going up against a, a good rebounding team, uh, what have you seen on, on film with them? On that you know makes them so good uh, on the, on the boards, and how do you uh, kind of thwart that? How do you uh, fight, fight that? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> their bigs play really hard. They have high motors. Um, I think that's probably their biggest advantage. Um, to go against that, I mean, we've been playing good rebounding teams all season long. We just have to rebound us five guys, really have each other's back, help each other out. Um, but yeah, we've been preparing all season for this. That was also okay, right here. Cam, uh, Cam, when we talked to you on Sunday, you seemed to have more of a, an edge, like, like, like you mentioned before. Um, how have you kind of tapped into that, that edge this last month? Cam. Um, uh, I mean, pretty much by losing. I mean, losing sucks, and especially losing that Big East title game. Um, how our bodies felt going into the game, and you know, everybody sacrificing and playing hard. And, you know, coming up short in that, um, us sharing that feeling in the locker room after that game adds to our edge. And, you know, we really just, we're going we're gonna to stay present, take it one game at a time, and really try to go after what we want to do. Over here. Um, question for Oso. Um, you're sort of this Swiss Army knife that can do a whole lot of different stuff. And I remember when I talked to Chase, he said, Shaka lets you guys play super freely. So. How does, you know, with your unique skill set and Shaka letting you kind of maneuver how you want, how does that help you improve as a player and, and get more creative? What's up? I think it helps just not uh, boxing me in as, I mean, most bigs across the country just have to do one thing or have to just post up or just set screens. I think just this team and this coaching staff allows me to just uh, play freely, like Chase said, um, handle the ball. But that, that also comes with trusting the work that I put in and the coaching staff trust that. So, um, yeah, this team and, and my teammates and coaches allowed me to do that. Right here. Uh, Cam, well, well, Tyler was out. How did this team kind of learn how to share the ball a little bit differently and how much has that really helped? Um, you know, now that he's back or, you know, has been practicing, where do you feel like that, that really helps you all at this point? Cam? <clears throat> um, I think when Tyler was out, all our, everybody individually on the team just honestly just played better. Um, we knew we would have to play better and, uh, you know, in Tyler's absence. So, um, you know, you can't really replace the best point guard in the nation. So um, we were mainly just going out there, figuring each other out. Like you said, it was a different perspective, especially with me having the ball a little more, uh, making more plays. and. Um, you know, I learned a lot, actually, about my teammates and a lot of things that they like and don't like. Time for a few more. Anybody? Right here. Uh, for Oso, you guys have been here before. So guys like Trey and Zaid, uh, what kind of time have you spent with them or what kind of conversations have you had with them for it being their first time at the tournament? Oso? Yeah, I think uh, we haven't really talked much about well, we've talked as a team about our experiences from last year and just how things felt differently, how the pressure's a little bit different. And we really tried to move forward on this year, just 
learning what's like letting your team down and what's not. Um, that was like a big issue last year. I feel like mistakes are somewhat are magnified in this in this atmosphere because it feels like it's, it it is do or die. So uh, if you make a mistake, it feels like you're letting your team down, your seniors, your coaches, everything. So. Uh, we've been talking a lot about that, just making sure that that's not we're not playing with avoidance goals. We're playing with approach goals and really going after it. Um, the only thing that you could do to let your team down is not giving it your all. So um, we've been preparing them. They've been great for us all season. They're great in the Big East tournament, and they'll be ready to go. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, just for. Uh, just for Cam again, I know you box. You, you've been boxing your free time. How does that help you um, in terms of driving to the lane more and then and then your footwork when you get around the hoop? Cam? Mm -hmm. uh, boxing has definitely made my legs a lot stronger. Um, sitting in the stance for a long time, that, that I was about to say a bad word. But uh, yeah, it, it doesn't feel good at all. Um, so yeah, definitely, it, it helps me a lot more on defense too, being able to move uh, a lot easier and being able to you know, stand my stance when my legs burn and uh, it helps with my condition for sure. <laughs> what up, coach? <laughs> you got a question for him? Anything else? No question. I think this guy in the front has a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, you're dismissed. Thank you. Appreciate, it, Appreciate it. And Coach Smart will be here momentarily. Thanks. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good luck to you. do what we're told. All right, we're joined by Coach Smart, and Coach will ask you to make an opening statement, and then we'll go to questions. We're excited to be here in Indy. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been in this building. I was a young guy at University of Dayton. I believe we played Purdue in 2002. So it's great to be back. Uh, excited about our group of guys, uh, those three guys that were just up here talking awesome representatives of Marquette University and of our team, as are the rest of our players. Looking forward to a heck of a challenge against Western Kentucky tomorrow. Questions, please, right here in the front. Uh, ben Steele, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Shaka, you like to say you can learn more from losses than you can from wins. After loss, last season's loss to, to Michigan State, I'm just curious for yourself, what did you dive into? What did you want to improve on for yourself? For myself, as opposed to the team? Well, we asked everyone in our program after the season, what did you learn from our NCAA tournament experience? Not just the Michigan State game. A lot of, people, a lot of times people like to dwell on losses. But definitely the Michigan State game, the Vermont game, and then all the moments in between. Um, so I have a folder in my hotel room with a file in it called Lessons from the NCAA Tournament. And it's answers from our team, coaches, staff, support staff. Some good stuff in there. But the key is applying it. Biggest thing for me personally, and I actually learned this from Coach Izzo uh, after the game. and kind of, I always like to learn from the coaches that we lose to. Um, one of the things that he does a phenomenal job of is spending time with individual players in, in that case, the moments in between the first game and the second game. And so just made a commitment this year. I'm going to try to spend more time coaching our players individually as people uh, than I've ever done in the past. Back here, Pat. Hey, Shaka, Pat, 40 from Sports Illustrated. Just wondering with uh, Tyler getting him back ready to go, as he says here, kind of how you balanced when to push, when to uh, step back, and, and the decision to not play him last week. It's good to see you, Pat Forty. 
not far from home for you. Yeah, you know what, in retrospect, it was the right decision to not play Tyler. It was, it was a tough decision because uh, when we were playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday last week, he was working out during the day and even playing one-on-one, -on -one, and he looked great. I mean, he was moving great, he was shooting great. But again, in retrospect, now having been through this week and the progression that we've gone through to get him ready for tomorrow, he needed to practice. You know, he needed uh, some repetitions, five on five, up and down. Um, it, it, I don't think it would have been fair to him to put him out there in that situation as much as we wanted him. We're literally playing, you know, who in my opinion to this point has been the best team in the country in the championship game. So you got to be a little insane to think you can go win that game without your best player if he's available to play. But he just wasn't quite ready in terms of going through all the things he needed to go through. I think the biggest challenge for him tomorrow is going to be the psychological part of coming back to playing after three weeks of not playing. Um, he's a very, very thoughtful, intentional, serious person and player, and he wants to get everything right. But I've, as I've explained to him, he doesn't have to hit a home run on his first at bat. Um, if he can get on base, help our team play well on both ends of the floor, be in good shape. Right here in front. Coach Gary Graves from the AP. Uh, I asked the players about you know, how they learned to share more while, while Chow was out. I'll ask you, how did that kind of help you um, redistribute minutes and redefine some roles while he was out? And, and how much do you feel like that will help you all now? Or where do you feel like it will help you? Well, you know, you're talking about a guy who's Big East Player of the Year last year and arguably the best point guard in the country. So when you take him out of the lineup, there's no such thing as replacing him with another guy. And we really didn't even redefine anyone's role other than saying, hey, without Tyler, you're gonna have to do this more than you did before. You're gonna have to do that more. And then there's about 35 minutes that need to be redistributed. I thought Zay Lowry and Trey Norman, our two freshman guards, did a phenomenal job stepping forward. Those guys have really grown up a lot over the last several weeks and put themselves in position where they can play significant, meaningful minutes against any opponent in the country. Uh, Oso and Cam obviously handled the ball a lot more with Tyler out. I thought they did a really nice job. Uh, but there's no substitute for Tyler Kolick, his passing, his vision, his ability to create pace for our team. Raise your hands, please, right here. Uh, Kaylin Wright from the Marquette Wire. Um, Marquette's been in the tournament for the past, this is the third year in a row you've taken the team to the tournament. So just how does that experience help you prepare for tomorrow's game and, and just heading into the game overall? It's a great point. I think the experience helps us a lot. Um, and we've got, you know, between our coaching staff and then most importantly, our juniors and seniors, we've got a core group of guys that have been in the NCAA tournament now going on our third year. Um, Oso said it best. I think in the first year, not necessarily me, but most of the guys were probably just happy to be there. Um, in our second year, we had such a phenomenal regular season and conference tournament. Uh, but we still were relatively young. And I think when we got to that Michigan State game, there was a little bit of imposter syndrome of like, wow, you know, do we really deserve to win this game? And there we were, it's a one point game with 3.36 left on the clock. And they outplayed us down the stretch. So there's a lot to learn from that. Uh, but I think those experiences, I gave our guys, um, we're big on props. We got a million props. Uh, so we created a chip, like a poker chip. For every one of the you know, meaningful experiences that we have had over the course of this season. And we have them all together. And on the front, it's got the score and the opponent. And then on the back, it's got something meaningful that occurred in that game, whether it's something that someone said in a huddle. We actually record all of our huddles. The theme of the game or something that happened in the game. For example, last Thursday, we had to beat Villanova twice. 
we thought we had the game won in regulation, but we didn't. So then we had to go win again. So on the back of that chip, it said, won the game twice. Those are valuable experiences, chips that our guys have in their pocket uh, that hopefully we can draw on to play well this week in Indy. Right here, in the middle. Uh, Jack Albright, Marquette Wire. Um, I asked Cam about his, his tough finishing ability around the rim, his ability to get um, a lot of spin on the ball. And I'm just curious, uh, from your perspective as a coach, what is his ability to do that sort of help and, and make him such a unique player and, and tough to handle? He is a unique player. You know, all three of these guys that were sitting up here five minutes ago, that's a great way to describe them, unique. You know, we could go another decade, you know, of coaching and following Marquette basketball, and I don't know if there will be guys with that type of skill set and even personality. Um, and I, I would throw some of the other guys on our team in that as well, and that's why we're in this position. Yeah, Cam can really finish. Um, you know, it's funny, he, he missed a couple early in the UConn game, it's not funny, but he had this look on his face like, how did those balls not go in? You know, and, and that's okay to be curious about that. You just don't want it to turn into frustration during the game. Uh, he, he, he just has, you know, some stuff you can't teach in terms of spin angles, English, um, understanding. The spin move he has is really good to get an angle to the rim. Um, and then he, I think he benefits from the fact that one of the years he was in high school, it might have been a senior year, he was kind of the big guy on the team. And so he had to learn tricks of the trade playing that position. Um, so Oso's a point forward and Cam's a big guy guard. Right here. Hey, Shaka, Ben Baby with ESPN. Just out of curiosity, was wondering, what's been the biggest thing for you personally after the way kind of things ended at Texas and now you at Marquette? What's enabled you to be as successful as you've been here? Um, and, and kind of how did that maybe previous experience help you personally uh, in your run here so far? Mm. I think the same thing that's, that's helped me be successful any time I've been successful or I've been around you know, teams that have been successful is um, number one, uh, trying to be present. Number two, um, trying to accentuate like the strengths of others around me because you know, this year, this week, I'm not gonna score any baskets or get any rebounds or any assists as much as I would love to play. Um, you know, I think when you're coaching and you've been through different experiences, you gain humility because you understand the longer you do it that you can't just push a button and make something happen. Um, and, you know, we're coaching human beings and they're not gonna be the same, you know, today as they were yesterday or tomorrow. So um, being present, gratitude, uh, that's probably the best thing that, that the COVID shutdown did for me just uh, ever since then. Um, just incredible gratitude even for the opportunity to do this because it was taken away from us for a little bit. And to do it with such an awesome group of guys. Questions, please. Seeing none, we uh, send you on your way. Thanks, Coach. Take care.